Right, okay, so in today's video we're going to have a look at direct and inverse proportion. We're going to start off by having a look at direct proportion, but there's really only two formulas that you need to know in, in these videos here. So we're going to have, and it depends on what the variable's letters are, but we're either going to have A equals KB or A equals K over B. Okay, and obviously it depends what the letter variables are here, but these are the two formulas that we're going to be using. And we're going to start off with direct proportion, which is the one above. Now, directly proportional to something means that it's basically multiplied by a number uh, to find what the other number actually is. So in this case here, we've got x is directly proportional to y, or in other words, if you multiply y by something, it equals x, no matter what those two values are. And we're just going to find out what they are. And we call that letter k when we're using this one here. It kind of stands for constant there, but we're going to find what the constant is between them and how they are proportional. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes on this because we've got a few to have a look at with direct proportion, and then we're going to have a look at inverse proportion. So we're going to start off with this top formula here, a equals kb. We're going to write that pretty much for all of these. Okay, so we've got x and y in this. We're going to have x equals k lots of or k times y. Okay, and we're just going to find out what, what y is actually being multiplied by to make x. So it says in the next line, when x is 7, y is 28. So it gives us two of the values here. And if we plug those values in, we're only going to have one unknown being the k, which means that we can definitely solve it. And we can solve any equation when there's one unknown. Unless, of course, we're looking at simultaneous equations and beyond, in which case we might have two unknowns. But in this case, we are going to just ensure that we only have one unknown in our equation. It then says, find the value of y when x is 5. Now, I'm going to ignore that for the moment, because I'm going to find out what k is first, based on this first bit of information here. So when x is 7, y is 28. So if I plug those in, x is 7, and that's going to equal k lots of, or k times... 28. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite this in a slightly different way. Rather than writing k times 28, I'm going to write 28k. Okay, and I'm not going to write out that step like that in any of the other questions. I'm just going to write it as 7 equals 28k because we're used to seeing it like that. We quite, we quite like it looking at it like that. Okay, so uh, for the next one, uh, for the next step here, we need to actually um, solve this. So if it's 28 lots of k, we need to divide both sides by 28. So we've already got one that's not very nice in our first question here. So 7 divided by 28 equals k. Now obviously if you've got a calculator, this is quite nice. Okay, if not, you are just going to have to simplify that as a fraction. Top and bottom both divide by 7. So actually if we just simplify it without a calculator, 7 divided by 7 on the top is 1, and 28 divided by 7 is Four, so it's one quarter or 0 0.25 and you can write it as a fraction or a decimal obviously if you've got a calculator here uh, this is obviously quite nice so if we rewrite our formula and this is what we always have to do we found k now so we can actually replace k in this formula that we're going to be using throughout the question and we can just write that k as being one quarter so let's go for that x equals one quarter y or in other words, y is being multiplied by a quarter to find the value of x. And you can probably see that on this one, as we've not got any further uh, little bits going on here happening to the y, it's actually quite nice to see that there. So y is being multiplied by a quarter to get x. So if we plug this next value in, it says find the value of y when x equals 5. Now what we have here is a formula to work out x in terms of y. And all that language means is we've got x equals something y. Okay, so it's a formula for x in terms of y. And you might just be asked to write down a formula. So it's just x in terms of, and I'm not going to write this down on every question, but there we go, that is a formula for x in terms of y. Okay, so all we've got now is we've got find the value of y when x is 5. So if we plug 5 in, we get 5 equals a quarter multiplied by y. Okay, so basically, what, what number can you quarter to get the answer 5? Now hopefully you know the answer there is 20, it's a quarter of 20 is 5. But if we just follow our normal uh, solving equations approach here, we divide both sides by a quarter. There you go, divide by a quarter. There you go. And obviously if you've got a calculator again, you can just type in 5 divided by 0 0.25. Or you can just think logically here, a quarter fits into 1 4 times, so it fits into 5 four lots of that or 20 times. So when you divide by a quarter, you get 20 equals y, or obviously you could write that y equals 20, okay? 
And there is your first answer for this first question here. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, so for this question it says g is directly proportional to the square of h. When g equals 100, h equals 5. Find the values of h when g equals 64. Now we'll address this values aspect here in a sec as we move on. But let's just go with our normal formula here. So g equals k h. Now we've got to make a slight amendment here because it doesn't say g is directly proportional to h, it says the square of h. So the square of h just means h squared, which could be written like this, it could just say directly proportional to h squared. So in our formula we just need to add our little squared there with the h and we're going to treat it in exactly the same way and just sub these numbers in. So it says when g is 100, so g is 100, and that equals, and let's work this out to the side, look, h squared, well 5 squared is 25, there you go, so I'm just going to work that out straight away. That's the number I'm going to put, put in instead because it's h squared. So rather than putting k times 25, I'm just going to put 25k. And then solving this, just like we would in a normal equation, divide by 25, and we get 4 equals k, or k equals 4. Now put that back into our little formula. So we've got k is 4 now, so we can put g equals 4h squared rather than kh squared. And then we just need to sub in our new value, so find the values of h when g equals 64. And if we sub that in, let's have a look. 64 for g equals 4h squared. And again, we just need to solve this. Now we can't square root yet, we need to get rid of this 4 first that's stuck onto the h squared. So if we divide both sides by 4, we get 16. So 16 equals h squared. And to find the value of h, we're going to have to square root both sides because that's h squared and the reverse of squaring is square rooting. So we're going to do the square root of 16, which is going to equal h. Now this is where this word values comes in. Okay, and this is something that is quite important um, because there is two square root answers to 16. Okay, obviously, hopefully, you know, the square root of 16 equals 4. Okay, but it also equals negative 4. So I would have two answers here. It could be positive 4 or negative 4. And that's why it says values. 4 times 4 is 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16. So whenever you square root a number, you've always got the positive and negative version there. So we get two answers for this question. Let's have a look at one more before you have a go. Okay, so the last question here, a is directly proportional to the cube root of b. So cube root of b, and that can also be written like this, cube root of b. So let's write this in, a equals k cube root b, and let's plug in the values. So a is 24, so 24 equals k, the cube root of b, and I'm going to work this out to the side, because that's the cube root of 8, and the cube root of 8 is 2. So I'm going to put 2k in there, I've already put my k in, so we might have had to rewrite that, let's have a look, let's get rid of that, 2k. Divide to both sides by 2, and we get k equals 12. And there we go, we've got our value of k, let's rewrite our formula, so let's bring that back up. And we get a equals 12 lots of the cube root of b. Now again onto that last line, it says found the value of a when b equals 27. So let's plug that in. a equals 12 times the cube root of 27. There we go, the cube root of 27 is 3. So it's 12 times 3. And that gives us a final answer there of 36. So we've got a very, very similar process in all these questions. It gives us two values. We sub them into our little formula. Always looks very, very similar. We just use this idea a equals kb. And obviously just amend the b there. If it's a b squared or a root b or a cube root or a cubed, you just stick that with the b and just treat it as normal, with, um, obviously amending the number there when you sub it in. Once you get the value of k, put it back into your original formula here. Okay, you're going to use this throughout the question and then just resolve your equation using the new value to find that other unknown. Okay, so here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so two questions there. Pause the video, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so c is directly proportional to the square of d. So c equals k, oh, it's a bit of a rubbishy k, there we go, k d squared. Okay, the square of d. When c equals 32, so 32 equals kd squared, so 4 squared is 16, so 16k, there we go, 16k, and divide both sides by 16, you get k equals 2. Right, let's sub that back in, so c equals 2d squared, and then find the value of c when d equals 3, so c equals 2 lots of 3 squared, which is 9, so 2 times 9, so c equals 18 there, and there's our final answer. On to the second question, let's have a look at this one. E is directly proportional to, so E equals K, square root of F, so root F. 
When e equals 18, f equals 9, find the value of f when e equals 30. So when e equals 18, we have 18 equals k root f, the square root of 9 is 3, so 3k. Divide both sides by 3, and we get k equals 6. Sub k equals 6 back into our formula. So e equals 6 root f. And then what have we got? We've got find the value of f when e equals 30. So 30 equals 6 root f. There we go. Divide both sides by 6. We get 5 equals the square root of f. And then we need to square both sides this time to get rid of the square root. So square both sides. And we get 25 equals f or f equals 25 as our final answer. Right, there we go. There's direct proportion. Let's have a look at some inverse proportion. OK, so we talked about the formula for this at the start. So rather than using a equals kb, this time for inverse proportion we use a equals k over b. So looking at our values here, it says d is inversely proportional to w. So I'll plug the values in. d is inversely proportional to w, so k over w. And you always put that first letter as the equals, so d equals, and then whatever it's inversely proportional to, which just means our constant is being divided by w in this sense. Okay, So it's just two formulas that you need to know here. So it says when d equals 3, w equals 8, we treat it in exactly the same way. So 3 equals k over 8, and then again solving that to find k. So k is being divided by 8, so times both sides by 8, and you get 24 equals k, or k equals 24. Again, bring that up to the top, plug it back into our formula, and we get d equals 24 over w. And then we just need to sub in our final value here, so find d when w equals 6. So d equals 24 over 6, and 24 divided by 6 leaves us with 4. So d equals 4 is our final answer. OK, so there's some inverse proportion. We're going to have a look at another one. So r is inversely proportional to the square root of f. So square root of f, obviously a little bit different here, got to take note of this, root f. When r is 32, f is 16, find the value of f when r equals 16. OK, so don't just assume that it's going to change in a certain way here, because 16 is half of 32, uh, r is being halved there. Let's actually just have a look and see what happens. So r equals k over the square root of f. And let's plug in these first two values, so 32 and 16. So 32 for r equals k over the square root of 16. The square root of 16 equals 4, so we can work that out and save ourselves writing it down lots of times. So k over 4. Multiply both sides by 4 here to remove that divide by 4. And 32 times 4 is 64, 128. So 128 equals k. Again, exactly the same as before. Let's plug that back into that original formula. So r equals 128 now over the square root of f. And then finishing it off, let's plug these last two values in, or the last one value. So find the value of f when r equals 16. So let's have a look. We get 16 equals 128 over the square root of f. Now this is definitely one of the hardest scenarios here because we've got to rearrange this now. So then there is a nice little quick trick. We can just swap the 16 and the root f. But if I just do this in two slow steps, so first things first, if we multiply both sides by root f, we get 16 lots of root f, or 16 times root f equals 128. And then you can divide by 16, and you get the square root of f equals 128 divided by 16. Okay, so it's two steps there, and you can quite happily just take those two steps, but you can actually just swap these round, okay, if you just think about the logic there in terms of what you're doing, times it over and then divide the other one, you can just swap them over. So we get the square root of f equals 128 over 16, and you might be looking at that thinking that it doesn't divide, actually 128 does go into 16, if you didn't have a calculator, you just have to build that up and work your way up to 128, writing down the 16 times table, obviously if you do have a calculator here this is quite nice. So that ends up being the square root of f equals 8, 128 divided by 16 is 8, and obviously here that is the square root of f, so we need to square both sides to finish this off to find out what f is, and 8 squared gives us f equals 64. Okay, so a very, very similar process, obviously, but we're looking at inverse proportion. So you've got k over whatever this second element says it is here, the square root of f or f squared or cube root of. Okay, you just stick that in and just treat it like a normal number there. So here's some for you to have a go at. So here's two questions. Pause the video there and we'll go over the answers in a sec. 
Okay, let's have a look then. So r is inversely proportional to the square root of s. When r is 2, s is 36. Find the value of r when s is 16. Okay, let's start writing this down then. So r equals k over the square root of f, so root s. It says when r is 2, s is 36. So 2 equals k over, and the square root of 36, let's just write it here, is 6, so k over 6. Times both sides by 6, you get 12 equals k, or k equals 12, and now we can plug that back into our formula here. So we get r equals 12 over the square root of s. Never like writing these s's down, they always look like 5's, so just make sure you don't get confused about what you're writing down here, I often do. So find the value of r when s is 16. So r equals 12 over the square root of 16, and again the square root of 16, which you can just work out to the side just to save yourself writing down lots of stuff here. Square root of 16 equals 4, so it's 12 over 4. 12 divided by 4 equals 3, so there we go, r equals 3 as our final answer. And on to the second one, y is inversely proportional to, so y equals k over the square of h, which a uh, square for x, sorry, which is x squared. Plug in our values, so x is 4, y is 1, so 1 equals k over 4 squared. We can just work that out to the side, 4 squared equals 16, so it's k over 16. Multiply both sides by 16, and we get 16 equals k. Exactly the same as before then, plug this 16 in, so we get y equals 16 over x squared. And then find the values of x when y equals 33. Okay, so we've got this values element coming back in again here. Hopefully you spotted that. So find the values of x when y equals 36. So 36 equals 16 over x squared. And then again, we can do our little swap here. So we can swap these over, there we go, and we get x squared equals 16 over 36. Now this is quite an interesting one actually because they are both square numbers and it's asking us to do the square root of this, okay? So obviously x squared equals that, so we need to square root it. So a little bit different here, obviously if that was a whole number that's quite nice. Obviously if you've got a calculator it's very nice and easy for you to just type in your square root button and then type in 16 over 36. Obviously a lot easier if you have uh, one of the dual level Casios. Again I'm using one of the class quizzes at the moment but I've linked that in the description if you are unsure on what they are, you can always have a look at them. Um, but uh, obviously if you type that into a calculator you get two thirds, okay, because you need to square root the top and the bottom, and if you square root the top and the bottom, you get x equals, let's have a think, square root the top and the bottom there, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 36 is 6, and that simplifies to two thirds. But again, your calculator is only going to give you the one value there, not the values. You need to remember that obviously there are two numbers that square to make that, you can have two thirds or you could have negative two thirds, okay? It doesn't say it has to be fully simplified or anything, so you could have left it as four sixths, but it's always good practice to make sure we simplify our fractions. So that was quite a tricky one there to finish on, but even if you didn't get that last step there, something to be thinking about if a fraction does occur, and it is quite common that you'll get a fraction. And if you do need to square root a fraction, you just remember to square root the top and the bottom. But there we go, that is direct and inverse proportion. Quite a lot there in quite a short video. Um, you know, that is quite a high level topic as well. Um, but that is the end of the video, obviously, if that was useful, if it was helpful, please do like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you for the next video.